Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome, Pascal. Nice. How are you? Fine, and you? We're good. We're good. We're happy that uh, things are starting to open up. We had a little um, day in the Beaujolais, and we were able to go to a restaurant with a very, very, very nice wine list for lunch. So that was it's nice to be able to uh, to hang out, to travel, to taste, and to start working again. <laughs> so um, it's been um, it's been a nice week so far. And, uh, looking forward to tasting your 17s, talking about all the changes, because there are quite a few. Yeah. And, um, and um, so do you, I, I'm sure you know this, but maybe you don't. You know that um, Rene, your grandfather, was the first winemaker that my parents met when we came to Burgundy. Yeah. Absolute first winemaker, the first tasting in the cellar. Yeah. Uh, we moved to Burgundy because we had a French student called Alain Philippe, who um, we knew in Philadelphia. And that's why we ended up in Burgundy and not in Provence. And um, so apparently he knew the Munures and he introduced us. And these were the very first wines my parents tasted. Um, I remember them as a child in a cellar. The, um, the two wines, the, the wines that were the most present um, were, um, excuse me, let me just close the door. There, one second. <laughs> Becky's listening in the next room, so there's an echo with the sound. So, just... <laughs> so the wines I remember the most as a child when I started tasting as a young kid was De Monti, Murnieret, and of course there was some... Lafarge? Not yet Lafarge, it was oh, later. Shit. It was later. No, 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 it was really Murnieret, very first, then probably de Monti, a little de Vogue, Cess, and, and DRC. But the most frequent we drank was Munieret and de Monti. And that's how I trained my palate. I remember <laughs> go, I remember going in the cellar by my father to go get the bottles and exactly where they were and everything. So it's. Uh, so I, I, I suppose you remember this guy. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. That's for me, right? So let's talk a little about the family and let me just find something because I'm not sure everybody knows the exact, and I'm sorry about the handwritten, um, the handwritten thing. So, but basically it all started with Pierre Minoret, I guess, in the 19th century. Tu le vois? You see yeah, 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 of course, yes. So it all started with Pierre Munieret. There were two sons, Eugène and Jules, and then there's two branches. Yeah. And here you guys are with your grandfather, René, and your father, and then you. Mm -hmm. Emile, that gave the Domaine des Perdries. Yeah. And then in your branch of the family is Munieret Gibourg. So mm -hmm. André married Jean Gibourg. Mm -hmm. Son George, and now of course there's Marie Christine, Marie Andre, and their daughters. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, there was Domaine Jean Pierre Munieret, which mm -hmm. has re retired in 2005, I believe. Mm -hmm. Monjar Munieret, which still exists, and Dominique Munieret, whom we used to work with, but he's also let his vines or selling the, well, en ferme, I don't know if it's Fermage or Metayage, uh, partially to Ben Larue. But um, you guys are still, I mean, your family, and you also still have vineyards in common, right? Yeah. You, you farm. Which vineyards do you farm from? From uh, Munier et Gibourg? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Echezo, uh, Quartier de Nuit, and, uh, and uh, Près de la Folie and Colombière. Okay. It's uh, one hectare for uh, Von Romanet and uh, 0.64 hectares for Echevu. So it's, uh, it's, it's half, half of the harvest is, is for us and the other half is for Hado Cousins. Okay. And um, up to 2003, you had their Shenyo too. You were yeah. Shenyo. My father uh, stopped um, renting this, uh, this parcel. And, but at this moment, he, he didn't know uh, 
I, I wanted to be to be back, but that there's no no regret. It's things uh, are like this. It, it's not it's not a problem. No regrets. On so my point of view, no regrets. How big is the domain now? Uh, seven hectares. Seven hectares. And um, how much do you own? How much do you farm? I, when you say how much do you own, it's a little bit complicated because, uh, in fact, um, the the vines uh, for the moment are uh, most of the vines are my parents' properties. Right. And uh, another part is uh, my two aunts' uh, properties. And so we can consider except uh, Echezo and uh, Près de la Folie Colombière and Gevray Chambertin, because Gevray Chambertin is uh, the property of a uh, Belgium. Uh, it was a Belgium friend of my grandfather. And uh, just for, it's, the, it's not a joke, but uh, when my father wanted to buy this parcel, uh, it was in 74, 75, something like, like this. And uh, it was, my father was just started because he, he produced wine on his own in 73 uh, and so he, he, he asked quite many money to, to the bank in order to, to start his activity and uh, there was an opportunity to buy this parcel au Mureau uh, from uh, Jean-Marie Chambertin and he asked my father my grandfather uh, if it was able for him to, to, to give him money but of course just to, to he, he just borrow. He wanted to borrow the, the money, but not. Uh, and my grandfather said, "When you have no money, you can't buy." So my father didn't buy the parcel, and my grandfather said, "But I can find someone who will be able to buy the parcel for you, uh, for him, in fact, and we will be able to to produce one. But you have to to do metayage, and it's a fifty-fifty metayage, and." Uh, this guy, uh, Belgium guy, was uh, um, someone my grandfather met for the twins, you know, between Nuit Saint-Georges and uh, Tamin, that is a, a Belgium town. And uh, they meet at this, they met at this occasion and they became friends. And, uh, but it's like, that's life. <laughs> and so, I mean, obviously you're based in Von Romanet and Nuit Saint-Georges yeah. makes sense. And, uh... Uh, you know, the other vineyards in a way in the Côte makes sense. But what the hell was the Savigny Gravin doing in there? Where did that? Ah, the history, yeah. In fact, my father um, was uh, selling some uh, uh, three, four, five wine barrels to some other colleagues. And uh, um, not a real friends of him, but someone, uh, a wine maker in Savigny was uh, the the son in law of a friend of my parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wanted to have some barrels to buy some uh, um, two, three, four, five uh, wines barrels. And uh, so my father uh, sold him um, several times barrels. And uh, this guy, um, I don't know if he needed money or if he don't know exactly, but. Uh, he decided, he proposed to my father to, because he had a, a lot of eau gravin mm -hmm. and he said, uh, I want to, to sell uh, uh, a third of an hectare. Well, would you be interested? And my father said, yes, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. um, inside this guy is um, uh, uh, Patrick. It's the father of uh, Nicolas Jacob, who is the you know, the, the guy who is responsible for the vines in the Romani County. Okay, domain. funny. Okay, and uh, so um, this is why my father bought, bought this, uh, this parcel. And what is very funny, this parcel, um, I used to say that it's the eldest parcel we've got because it has been planted in uh, 1902 and uh, it has never been completely uh, replaced. Mm. So, it's very uh, oh. excited to imagine that some vines are probably more than 100 years old. Of course, they are not very numerous, but... So, 
Bruno Clare's oldest vines in Domino in Savigny are also 1902. And I don't remember, my memory doesn't go back that far, of course, but maybe there was a frost in that year or something. Cause that possibly. Don't know. I, I wouldn't tell you, I don't know. Possibly. But, but what can be interested because some, some colleagues of mine told me that in their vine, uh, they, they're able to find um, uh, vines without um, um, portograph. Uh, Ungrafted, own rooted. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because uh, at this moment, you know, not, not every people were able to replace everything with uh, uh, root, uh, rootstock. Is that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, so when they sometimes they, they find some root, some um, vine like this. Really? And um, I'm very excited to think that we can, we could be in the same case. Mm. So we pay attention to, and sometimes when we have some uh, doubt, we, we try to dig mm -hmm. uh, all around uh, the vines in, in order to see if we can find some root stuff or okay. not. You still haven't hit the gym. Have you found one? No, not yet. No. <laughs> ah, okay. But, well, but we, we didn't look for very uh, accurately, I think. Well, speaking of old vines, I think one of the great, great um, things about um, Domaine Gérard Mignoret, Rene Mignoret before, maybe one day passed <clears> out, <throat> um, is the genetic material. Hmm. I think you have a huge proportion of old vines and obviously some wonderful selections, genetic yeah. material. Do you want to tell us a little about that? Yeah, what, 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 unfortunately, uh, uh, all, all the, the vines uh, we have problem with are the youngest. Mm -hmm. And um, my father and my grandfather uh, replanted um, the, the the most important, uh, important uh, replanted period was in uh, 1985, just, just after the frost, in fact, of 1985. Mm -hmm. And um, before this period, my parents prepared their own selection uh, in order to replace, in order to plant. And after this frost, uh, it was not possible to replace all the vines with uh, our own production. And they decided to, to work with a pepinierist. Mm -hmm. And uh, they thought it was very, um, very easy. And uh, after this, they decided to stop producing their own uh, selection. Mm. And uh, now I think it's, it's, um, it's a shame because we, now, now we can see that, uh, for example, in Jeuré Chambertin, in, uh, in 1985, it has been replaced, completely replaced, and it was uh, replaced by clone, with clones. Mm. So the wines are, um, it's not bad wines we produce on these places. It's, it's good wines, but the, the complexity is, is very different from what we can find, even in, in uh, uh, bourgogne Rouchon, for example. If you have to compare the complexity of uh, the, the parcel of uh, Omuro we've got in Jeuré Chambertin and the Bourgogne Rouchon, they, there's, for me, there's no comparison. Mm. You, you, you we have much more complexity in, in Bourgogne Rouchon. But in general, in Vaughan and Nuit, you have really beautiful, super old vines, including in the Pastograin, including, right? Yeah. Yeah. Say, it's pretty old, I mean, in general. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty old. The, the gamay in, in, um, in the parcel of Pastourin um, are, are very old. And, uh, but when we have to replace, we replace with Pinot now. With uh, our, Yeah, and, uh, but we, we are going to do some selection with gamay because we, we don't know what, what uh, will be the future. Hmm. So I think it's, it's interesting to, to, to be very careful and uh, because these vines are for, probably 70, 80 years old. And um, we can suppose at the end of my generation, these uh, vines will have disappeared. So it's necessary to, to preserve the, the, ident the, the genetics of these vines. So it's a, it's a big job. We have started 10 years ago, in fact. And now we have, uh, we have um, planted a conservatory in our garden. We, we planted it in, uh, in April. 
and it's approximately 900, 900 uh, vines and uh, it's approximately 70 or between 70 and 80 different kind of genetics amazing so, and and in here we will be able to, to take what we need in order to replant when it will be necessary to replant what is interesting at this place we have only safe um, virus safe um, uh, plant uh, vines so they have been tested and they safe and the place where we have planted uh, I've never seen v uh, vines before so we can suppose the soil is a uh, cool free, way, uh, virus free a virus free. Okay. yeah so it's interesting super super so I mean We've known the wines for, fifth, I guess, 50 years now. Um, and the domain was always slightly under the radar. Um, mostly, I mean, there's, there's a logic to this. I think mostly because you guys sold a lot to private people rather than mm -hmm. restaurants and export. I mean, even when we started exporting for years, we only had uh, Bourgogne, Bourgogne Pastoura, Vaughan, and Nuit. Yeah. We didn't have Sucho, we didn't have Brulee, we didn't have Echezo, mm -hmm. and in the American market, mm -hmm. uh, at the time, people were much more interested in Premier Cruz and Grand Cruz, and especially from Vaughan. So they didn't really pay attention because what's Nuit Saint Georges and what's Village and what's Pastogram. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's one of the explanations um, why the domain is only getting known today um, is that you've made available pretty much every appellation for exports mm -hmm. and, and for the trade. And, but you've also made some huge changes. Um, so do you want to first tell us, you didn't want to do this at first, you were an engineer. Yeah, but you, you know, the first reason um, for which I decided to, to, to come back was just to be, to work on my own, to try to, to work with my two ends. Uh, and it, uh, what is funny, uh, when I was in my office, when I was an engineer, I was responsible for, for people in a production department. And when uh, um, I took my, um, I used to take my pen and I look my fingers and my hand and say, this hand is not made to take a pen. Mm -hmm. It was, it was ludicrous, you know. <laughs> so, uh, and, but I didn't know at this moment uh, um, what, what I wanted to do exactly. But um, when my wife uh, decided, well, she decided, wife always decide, uh, women always did, decide, but uh, she said she wanted to be back in our, um, in our um, Burgundy because we were near Paris in Orléans and she wanted to be back. And uh, the question was, uh, should I stay an engineer or should I try to become so, something else someone else and uh when I, I took a pen and make a write a few words and say what i want to do what, what i like what i dislike what i want to do what i don't want to do anymore and the the result was uh i want to do a job where uh, in which you're responsible from the early beginning to the end mm -hmm. and it was not the case in the industry of course so uh, I said, okay, what, what kind of job I can do uh, with these uh, parameters? Uh, and I said, okay, probably uh, to be a vigneron, it could be a, a good idea. Um, uh, I used to know that my uh, father business was quite um, good. Uh, I wanted to be in the nature, so good job. Good job to try it. and uh, so i asked my father my father was uh, five years before to be retired and i uh, told him uh, i have to say that uh, he was not very happy <laughs> because uh, not very happy uh, about this uh, piece of news because uh, for him it was necessary to to explain everything mm. and he didn't want to to mm. explain because uh, he, he wanted to be more quiet. And he said, okay. And I think my mother tried to, 
to, to convince him to say, okay, he want to try, I think you have to let him try. Mm -hmm. And my father was persuaded that I was a intellectual, but not a Farmer. manual guy. Not a peasant. Uh, yeah. So, but, not the right but he didn't, yeah, okay. <laughs> but he, he didn't tell me. He didn't tell me. He told uh, my, my mother, but never to me. And uh, he said, okay, we, we're going to try. Uh, and uh, first, I, I didn't want to change anything. Uh, everything was perfect. I think uh, the vines were beautiful. Wine, I, I like the wine. People like the wine. Um, no more wine to sell. So perfect uh, situation, professional situation. But after one year, uh, so I have to decide if, if I wanted to what, stay. What year was that when you... It was, uh, I uh, left uh, my previous job in uh, November 2003. Mm. So uh, I told him, I think uh, just before uh, or just after, I can't remember, uh, 2003, uh, sorry, 2003 uh, harvest. Okay. I told him. So, okay. And uh, so uh, I tried, I lied, and I say, I, I want to stay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, uh, I've been, uh, I studied a very little study in, uh, in, uh, in Bonn, in CFPP de Bonn. And, uh, and after, uh, um, I pay for, for, comment on dit, par social, uh, uh, for shares in the company. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, to be to be uh, an associate with uh, yeah, associated uh, with my with my father and my uh, yeah yeah and with and my mother and uh, but the most difficult uh, started at this moment because uh, uh, I I was I, I was passionate very early uh, with this and. Uh, uh, I, I um, asked many things to my father and uh, probably the most frequent question I asked was uh, why do you, why do you, do we do this? What is the reason? And most of the time, the, the answer of my father was we do this like this because we do this like this for okay. a long time. Yeah, long time. <laughs> yeah. So, and but not, so not all the time, but often the reason what we do like this. Okay, so I try to understand because if I ask, uh, it's most of the time it was because uh, something was wrong for me or something was not completely in the right way, I, I can imagine. And uh, so I was very lucky because my father uh, let me do exactly uh, what I uh, want. Mm. And I remember my first harvest, it was 05. And uh, when I told him in the benef during the vinification, uh, so uh, do we have to, to punch uh, out uh, the morning, the afternoon, the, the evening, the every day, two days in the week? Uh, and he said, now you have decided to come back. Mm -hmm. You do exactly what you want. Really? So, okay. So, but uh, after this, uh, of course, he, he gave me some advices, and uh, so. And at the early beginning, it was quite quite easy. But after, uh, when I wanted to change things uh, and the way to cultivate the vines, and it was something very complicated for for my father. And uh, be, because his way to think is not my way to think. Mm. Um, my father needs to be secure. Mm. You know what he do you think he, he, he don't like very much he doesn't like very much risk uh i couldn't say i like risk but um <laughs> if you want to change it okay so when did the first organic thing happen when uh between 10 and 11 11 i would say 11. 2011. yeah 2011. and did you go quickly to biodynamics or straight Straight, both both together. Yeah, in fact, organic. There's no. The definition of organic is very simple. You do not use product coming from petroleum industry. That's mm. all. So 
I was not very interesting in this um, in this way because it was just a, a rule, very simple rule, and uh, we can see that you can be organic and you can be not very reasonable organic. Mm. So if you, I think, if, for example, if you use too much sulfur in the vines, mm -hmm. for example, uh, if you use too much copper, or if you, so I think it's there's no real sense and biodynamics uh, um, for me um, give me um, the lines the line the guiding line mm. and uh, in fact uh, I was not able to to, to do it on, on my own so I asked uh, someone uh, to, to help me and this guy was uh, Bernard Zito mm -hmm. who is quite uh, known in the in the coast he helped many domains to to go from uh, organic uh, to biodynamics or for conventional to biodynamic. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I remember I told him, you know, we, we are going to work five years together, but after five years, I want to be able to decide on my own. Mm -hmm. So uh, I love this guy, but uh, I told him I can't live uh, only with the advices. Mm -hmm. I, I have to take my own decision and I have to be able to, to, to build my solutions, you know, and not only to take uh, something uh, and someone else would have given. As someone with a background as an engineer, did you ever, do you struggle? Did you ever struggle with the idea of biodynamics? Do you? No, I, I did not struggle because uh, I think uh, it's, it's not because you you don't understand that there's not uh, um, um, I would say a, a mechanic behind you know it's not uh, magical it's not uh, mystic it's not uh, I, I don't think so I I think there's something very uh, very uh, you, you can uh, you can feel really and uh, even if I didn't understand everything uh, I I trust and I wanted to see you know first of all I say I trust mm. and I and I try mm. and and all during these years um, this feeling has been reinforced and uh, uh, you know it's it's uh, you, you can compare with another question uh, if you are a scientist, uh, could, could you uh, could you trust? Uh, could you could you think God exists if you scientist? So you 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 there's no opposition. You could be a famous scientist and you can think that God is existing. So that's that's so, what my, my Jesuit um, school director when I was in in boarding school used to say I'm 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 a priest but I'm going to teach you um, mm -hmm. chemistry and I have no problem with that yeah. but yep they can coexist um, I've heard um, because you know von Romane in Burgundy should be the place where the greatest farming happens for vineyards it should be um, and a lot of farmers are very good, but I think, um, and some of the biodynamic farmers are very good, but they're, they're like biodynamics five, six, seven, ten 10 years ago. I've heard from at least two winemakers that you have the most beautiful vines in Von Romane, um, from Charles Lachaud, mm -hmm. um, and from, uh, Nicolas Faure, who obviously, you know, still works in Vone, but worked in Vone for a long time. And he said, he's, he's very critical of a lot. I, I adore Nicolas Faure and I'm a super, but sometimes he's very, he's very hard on people. And for him to say that is not, um, it's not politeness, it's admiration. And, um, and I, I don't exactly know why, because when you look at, at Charles, he's doing a lot of extremely spectacular things right now, of course, mm -hmm. with, with the non-hedging. Um, the gobelet, the non-tilling now. I mean, you know, he he's going he's going very far. But there's 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 only four people that 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 you hear about from those. It's Charles, of course. Now you, Bizo, Lalu, hmm? 
those are the four people you hear about that are that are the the best farmers in Vaughan. Um, I know you're a modest person, but <laughs> uh, no. When we did the test earlier this morning, and I told you that mm -hmm. you and then I don't blah blah blah. So, what does that mean? Do you think? Uh, why are your vines so? Why why do they draw the admi admiration of pretty critical? Yeah, but I, I think because uh, for a very simple reason, probably because I love the vines. <laughs> I love the. I would say I I love my vines, but I love all the vines, and uh, and uh, I think it's uh, it's it's very exciting to to see uh, that if you pay attention, if you, it's like people. If you if you pay attention, if you give to people, even if you don't wait anything in return, you will have a return. Mm. And uh, and I think uh, when I the return I can have from the vines is the fact that I I can feel the that the vines are are well. I can see uh, um, of course the leaves, the the woods, uh, the grapes, of course, and. Uh, I think it and the soil, of course, because you you can't separate the the, the vines from from the soil. And uh, something thing I like to do is, for for example, in in July the, or or beginning of August, and at the end of the day, uh, I, I like to go in the vine to sit uh, on the soil and, and to be like in your in your living room, you know, and. Uh, the, the the lies going through the leaves it's it's very um, smooth right and you can breathe um, the smell is very particular and uh, I think you able to 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 know if if the vines if the soils are are, are well in fact mm. and uh, um, um, you know I have uh, some some people who, who came with us to to help us uh, during uh, to do to do the job during this season. And one of the guys told me, you know, it's very strange because the the atmosphere from one parcel to another one is completely different. Mm -hmm. And I say, yes, it's you. I'm very happy to tell to tell you this because it's it's real, and it's a part of the personality of the place. Mm -hmm. uh, um, um, someone I know uh, used to this expression. She she talked about. The, the genius of the place, uh, you know, and, and I think it's something true. The it's very true, you know, the soul of the place. Yeah, and uh, it's a part of the link to the vines, the part linked to the soil, um, and and many other things. But and this is probably in order to to answer your question, uh, because I want to feel this, because I, I want to have a quite a discussion. With, with the place uh, uh, the, I work in, or with the vines, it's it's necessary for me to to give everything, or all I can do. But you you can you can do well, and sometimes you can do wrong. Mm -hmm. So we have to be all the time. Um, we have to listen to in in order to to be sure what I did is it a good thing or you know we we try to. To, to make the, the vine to be uh, higher and higher, okay? For some people, it's something completely crazy because we have some uh, uh, hydric stress and uh, they think it's not a good thing to have a big height of, uh, of leaf. Mm -hmm. And uh, some others, like me, think it's a good thing to have higher level of uh, leaf. So and, do you trim higher? Yeah, it's uh, uh, it's uh, between uh, one meter sixty and one meter seventy. Wow, that's high. Yeah, it's quite high. But you haven't but, replaced your posts yet. No, no, it's quite straight. No, I mean, the. Oh um, uh, no, no, it's uh, it's normal, uh, normal uh, wood uh, wood stick, in fact. But okay. it's necessary to be very uh, to go very to come very often in each vine in order to keep everything straight mm. because if you wait too long it's going like this right. and the shape of, of the of the um, branches 
uh, is, is taken is like this. You, you can't put it straight at all. So you have to, to come very often, mm -hmm. uh, do the job as quick as possible, mm -hmm. but uh, very gently, mm -hmm. and, and, and to come back very early. Are you, when it goes. are you interested in not hedging at all? The paroni du tout? Well, je, in Make fact, what, what, what is interesting, because when you, 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 you cut at this height, in fact, you, you never cut a lot of um, pine or bud. Apex. Apex. Mm. Uh, so what does that mean? That means that, in fact, I'm sure at the end, I will have probably uh, half, probably half, of, of the, 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 the apex uh, mm. that won't, uh, um, that will be completely safe. Okay. Beca because it's so high, uh, of course, uh, some uh, have been cut, mm -hmm. but some uh, will have more difficulties to reach this height. Mm. So we have some, some have been cut and some not, but, uh, Probably for some parcel, I, I, I'm very interesting to to do like uh, like uh, Bisleroy or, or Charles or mm. I think it, it, it's interesting. The problem is if it's very difficult season and it's not the case in uh, 2020. Uh, if it's very difficult, I, I, I can remember, for example, in uh, 2016, uh, it was very difficult for La Lubis Leroy because the uh, the mildew was very, very aggressive. Yeah. And, and uh, because you, you need to, to wait in order to do the, um, the, well, the bridges, you know, you know we, we do uh, with the final branches, you know, you have to do like this. Yes. Okay. But it, it's necessary before to do this, it, it has to be high enough. Mm -hmm. And when it's high enough, it's very, it, you have all the branches all together and not possible to treat. Mm. And at this height, it, it's necessary to have a very good matter, uh, machine in order to do a good spreading. Yeah. And uh, if the season is very uh, difficult, uh, the result on the leaf is, uh, is not so good. But for, for this year, it's, it's perfect to do this. Cool, so time goes quick, so I'm gonna to have to move it on, but I'm gonna take a couple questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Normally I have a moderator, but I don't tonight. So Jay, Jay from Veritas um, wants to know if there was a vintage, if you could, when you really felt a significant impact to your changes in farming. Uh, I think uh, the first one was probably uh, 12, mm. 2012. Okay. Uh, the first one. And, but I think the, the, because uh, as you know, Paul, we, we, we did some change in, in the vines, but we did also some changes in the, We're getting in, to in the vinification after. Yeah. But if we just talk about uh, the, the vines, the, the way to cultivate, I would say 2012. Okay. Um, just quickly, what's next for you in farming? Um, are you looking at milk instead of sulfur? Are you looking at things like that or? Uh, in fact, we use less and less sulfur. Mm -hmm. we, we use uh, what we call in French petit lait. We, yes, way. We, we use uh, teas, we use uh, uh, decoction, we use, uh, we use plants. Mm -hmm. More and more we use plants. So it's on a treatment point of view, this is what we, we, we try to do now, um, but for a couple of years now. And the other thing is uh, the, the, the problem when you study the, the life in the soil, you can see that the life is uh, not so, not very, not more important in organic soil in comparison with conventional soil. Can you, say, sorry, can, can you say that again? The, when you, you analysis um, uh, how um, the soil is living um, with uh, micro, microorganism or uh, everything, you, you can see it's bacteria and etc. 
the difference between conventional and and organic it's not very important really yeah it's a if you didn't know this i, I can tell you it's true you why sound, you sound because like traitor right now to the the cause yeah, <laughs> yeah that there is one uh, responsible of this i don't know if you know it no i'm i'm plowing 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 so plowing it's good for why c'est bien ça plowing yep ouais. so okay. the the problem is when when you 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 plow you destroy uh, all the because you plowed on the the 5 10 20 centimeters and at this place you've got the life is very important but if you plow you you destroy everything mm. in fact a soil is not made to be uh, naked mm. okay so the the next uh, step is uh, what can we uh, um, put on on the rows mm. uh, what kind of uh, plants mm. can we have who, who could be that could be good friends of the vines mm. uh, no real competition but that can uh, maintain good life in, in the soil mm. and how we can keep this uh, as long as possible, you know? And uh, I, I think it's, uh, some people are already working with, uh, if, you, if you look, for, um, for example, Pierre Auvernois in, uh, in Jura, uh, many people who work in biodynamics, uh, they, like him, for example, have, the soil are, are never naked. I know. But yeah, and here I, I remember the first first year I was here. Uh, for me, vines were beautiful when it was completely naked. You know, you can see the soil, only the soil and and the leaf, green leaves. Uh -huh. That's all. It was beautiful. Now I think it, it's something I don't want to see anymore. So, do you think um, that no plowing at all is possible with the vineyard densities in Burgundy? No, I, I think it's not completely, but uh, I think uh, uh, we can use uh, some other tools, in fact, not just to uh, very thin um, uh, charrues. Um, plows, so just, just scratch. Yeah, basically. very small, very thin, in mm. order to to, to not to remove everything, but just to 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 dig very thin, um, and, and not to remove all, all the, the 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 plants you you can have, but just to make uh, uh, oxygen come in the in the in the soil, just to to try to make it more more supple, little, but. N not to remove it as a thing. I think it's not in, it's not the purpose. Okay, so we have to move on from the vines, but I I do want to hear this. Icy has a question, just and she she asks it to everybody, and it's a good question to ask to everybody. What is Pinot Fin? Hmm. Pinot Fin. For me, Pinot Fin it's um, Pinot that produce very. Um, um, not small grape, but um, a grape for which the the yeah, uh, the stem is quite long, and the berries are very not very not big berries, quite small berries, and not very uh, not uh, all the berries don't touch each other. Uh, mm -hmm. each other. And uh, for Pinot Fin, um, it's for me, because some other people can have another definition of this, but for me, it's this kind of, uh, of grape. And what is very funny is, uh, depending the way you cultivate the vine, the, the, um, you can have different kinds of grapes. I, I, I have some very good example. Um, we have some parcel that were very sensitive to botrytis before we, we use biodynamics. The grapes were very big, quite big, big berries, and very sensitive to butterflies. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it's not the case anymore. The stem is longer. So I think biodynamics help to have a longer uh, stem. And 
the berries don't touch. They they're probably a bit bigger than some in if we compare with other places, but no more sensitive to botrytis. Mm. And uh, I wouldn't say it's pinofa now, but uh, it's closer to pinofa now than it was before. Mm. And uh, the the production uh, you, you you can have. Uh, in Pinot Fin, the, the production, of course, is not very important, naturally speaking. Because, and, and it's interesting because you are not able to, you, you, are, um, you are not able to do green harvest. And I think uh, it's good to don't do green harvest mm -hmm. because the more you can remove some grapes, the more you will have grapes the year after. I think, I think I'm starting to know what Pinot Fin feels to, or tastes to me like or feels to me. What, the, what, does, it, what does it taste, what, what does it make you feel? I think the, the, the concentration is more important. Uh, the first thing is, uh, and probably the second thing is the, um, the, the texture. Texture is very different. Mm. Uh, it, the, the, the two most differences, more important differences for me in comparison with some uh, less fun <laughs> Pinot in fact and complexity. Let's move on to winemaking because we've got winemaking to cover and we've got several changes in your vines. So mm -hmm. the, the changes in winemaking, the, the most spectacular ones are actually fairly recent and the wines have changed a lot. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to, do you want to just tell yeah. us? Yeah. So the first changes was in uh, 2012. The first time we, we had an uh, uh, old cluster, but it's not very uh, original because... Did your, grand did your grandfather ever use... Um... Yes, he used some, but my, my father didn't use them. Okay. Yeah, no, he didn't. And um, so we had... A, the proportion was quite reasonable. It was 25% or something. The most important was 25%. Some had only ten, and uh, but it was very interesting. And I, I, I wanted to use all those not because uh, it was a fashion, but uh, because all the wine uh, I was very uh, interested in was wine, uh, were wine uh, that contains all clusters. Uh, and I, for me, the the complexity is much, is more important for me in uh, with whole cluster and uh, it brings more aromatic uh, organoleptic freshness even if it removes some uh, acid even if the ph is uh, a bit higher uh, in comparison with complete this time uh, harvest uh, so it was the th the first thing uh, and year after year I, I wanted to add more to see what was the effect because uh, um, it's important to taste to to try sorry to taste to try um, things and to to check if what you think is quite true or more or less true or more or less wrong and uh, the second more important i think was the in 16 2016 we reduce the, we decrease the quantity of sulfite in uh, in the vinification and in the aging, so, and before the bottling. So let's. So um, in 2019, how much whole cluster do you have? Uh, uh, the the average it was uh, 50 percent in in uh, 18. 50 percent is the average. In 18. In 18. But in 19. Hundred, you're everywhere. Everywhere. Is that going to is that going to stay that way? You or do you? No, not? no, 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 no. Uh, uh, because the the vintage was I, I think was um, suits perfectly uh, hundred percent old cluster for me. Mm. Okay. Uh, and I wanted to see if uh, hundred percent old cluster could be something uh, who can make the wine completely. Uh, the same, you know what I mean? Yep. Or if uh, the effect of the old cluster uh, was able to reveal the personality of each terroir. 
Mm. And I think the, for me, the, on this vintage, 19, I think the answer for me is it's reveal more than it's hide uh, everything in fact. I can't wait to taste now that we have the right. So I'm just gonna, Diane, it's the second time. Hi, Diane. We will get to the difference between Richemont and Cra. The Cra is open. I have it, um, Pascal has it. Um, but we'll leave the terroirs alone for one second um, more. I'd really like to talk. So your low use of sulfur is pretty exceptional in the Côte de Nuit or in Burgundy in general for a domain that's not exactly, doesn't taste exactly natural mm -hmm. because it's not made in a meth. It's not Van der Swaff. It's still classic Burgundy Menti age with a lot of delicacy now that there's less sulfur and less extraction, but I'd, I'd, let's please talk about sulfur because it's, it's pretty extraordinary. Um, no, I, I don't know. In fact, what I have to say, we, we try, I try, I like to try many things because I, I want to see, I want to discover. I think in, in wine, we, we not reinvent, we did not, we do not reinvent things. Hmm. We just rediscover things. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we have to, to, to wonder if uh, sulfite in the wine, why do we use sulfite in fact? Mm. And uh, uh, is it, m most of my colleagues said, yeah, but you have to use sulfite because uh, uh, the wine uh, will uh, travel and you have to protect it when, when it will travel. Okay, so, but if you analyze uh, the quantity of sulfite, just after you bottle the wine, uh, of course, you've got a, a quite high level of uh, free sulfide. And this part is able to protect the wine. But if you make the same analysis, six months after, it's not the same at all. Mm. The, the, the level of free is, is much more different. It could be half of what it was uh, six months before. Mm -hmm. So. If you if you the wine travel just after the bottling, it makes sense. But if you if you make the wine travel uh, six months is one year or more than one year after, there's no sense. And and the the BVB though so uh, who makes uh, some analysis in uh, what we call SAQ, you know, Service Aval de Qualité, they make this analysis and most of the time, quite at any time, they say the level of sulfite is too low. Of course, because even if the, the level is high or good after the bottling, we know it will decrease very uh, quickly. So, and, and I think the last thing is, uh, the, the wine is able to, to age or to, to, to be able to travel, not because he have some sulfite, just may, but for me, because his structure the, the way it's constituted is able to do this. Hmm. So if we, if we can consider the wine is able to, to, to edge because it had some sulfide, uh, there's something a little bit disturbing. I'm not saying that I, I don't add uh, any oh. sulfide, but the quantity I add are very low and at the, the, these quantities are added at specific moments. Okay, so let's talk about that, when? When? So we, I tried to don't put some sulfide during the vinification. Okay. So to do this, it's necessary that uh, the, the harvest to be safe, very safe. So saltage have to be very tough. Uh, it's, uh, so if, uh, for example, uh, in, 19, in uh, 2013, uh, it was, uh, we had some botrytis. Uh, not, not high quantity of opportunities, but even if you, you, you can find some berries, uh, very low quantity, you can imagine you have it on the stem. Mm. So you have to be very careful. You, you can do not use any sulfide, but I think in that case, I would use a little bit. Okay. But when it's completely safe, I think I take the risk to don't put some. So because it makes... Uh, I think more the complexity at um, the beginning of the complexity of the wine for me, mm. because you, you do not uh, select but with the sulfide 
uh, yeast uh, that are gonna do the the, the fermentation. Mm. Okay, and 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 so you you with sulfite you can stop bad yeast, but you also stop good yeast. Not all good yeast, of course, but you can stop some good yeast. So, pied de cuve or no? Pied de cuve or no? Pied de cuve. Ah, no pied de cuve. No, no pied de cuve. No. So, no, if you can, no sulfur, you let the fermentation yeah. start, start naturally? Yeah, we, we really pay attention to, to, of course, we taste the juice uh, every day, uh, several times a day if it's necessary. We protect with carbon dioxide. Uh, we put in in the vat in order to remove oxygen uh, the most as possible. Mm. And when it start, we, when we can feel that the fermentation want to start, we help it to start. Okay. So uh, if you use a large quantity of old cluster, it's in my opinion, in my opinion, it's not a good idea to decrease the, the quantity of the, the the temperature of the grapes too too low. Mm. If we want to do a, a cold maceration, it, it's probably a better idea if it's in a complete distem instead of a whole cluster. It's very risky to, to do a cold maceration if you have 100% whole cluster. Okay. So do you do any cold maceration? No. Okay. No, so no cold maceration. So since we're on the, um, the cuvaison, hello? Oui, hello, oui. Yep, yep. If, since we're on the cuvaison, did you change um, your extraction process over the last few years? Yeah, yeah, because uh, if you have a large quantity of old cluster, the idea is not to, to break everything during the three first days. There's no sense. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So. Yeah. The, you, we, we, in fact, the, the punch will help to, to deliver, if we can say, juice in order to feed the fermentation. So do you punch yeah. down at a certain time during the fermentation or? Yeah, uh, we, we start, we, we, we go in the vat when the, when it decreases, uh, when it's approximately, um, Density, basically. Uh, the first juice, uh, juice are near uh, 1,020 of density, something okay. like this. So towards and the after, end. we have to feed. Okay. So, so and, it's important. And then, so on, a, on, a, on average, how many pijage total would be in a... Three or four. Okay. So this is not very much. No. And that changed, I assume, Compared to like 2003 when you started, or four when you started with your father. Yeah, oh, completely. Like yeah, and, and, and with my father, there was uh, another logic. It was, uh, for example, um, it was uh, the habit to, to, to do much more punch out on a Grand Cru, uh, a bit less on a Premier Cru, and a bit less on a Village. And a bit we, we don't use this uh, logic. In fact. We, we taste the wine very often and, and we try to adapt. So let's finish the sulfur conversation because um, when do you prefer to add it first? Uh, in the cellar, when the, after, after the malolactic, of course, but not just after the malolactic. Uh, these uh, previous vintages, the malolactic started very early after the, the fermentation. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, generally speaking, one month maximum after we, we, we fill the barrel. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but when the fermented uh, malolactic are ended, it's uh, November, beginning of November or maximum December. So the, the temperature of the cellar is decreasing. So I think if the temperature decreases, it's not for me not necessary to add uh, sulfite at this moment. Mm. It's better to add it when the temperature in the cellar start to increase, and the risk is probably when it start to increase. Okay. So, begin beginning of April, probably something. But in fact, we use temperature control in the cellar. 
Mm. So we are not really influencing, but we can have uh, any, anyway, uh, little uh, differences. So I had it after two, three, four months after the malolactics. Mm. And, uh, and after, just uh, before we, we blend all the barrels. And you told me recently that um, in general, your total sulfurs now are pretty low. Yeah, it's less than, uh, it's, between, it's between 15 and 20 milligrams per liter for total. For total, that's extremely low. It's low. Um, there's, those are doses that are, that are actually acceptable in the natural wine world. And I don't know that there are that many people that do that in, the, in Burgundy. Mm, Bizo do this. Yeah, be the, well, the people like Bizo, Prio Eroc, mm. um, yes, people like that, but uh, they're not that many. So mm. it's pretty extraordinary. And uh, I think wines are like the seven. Where, where were you? Were you already there in 17, those kinds of levels? Approximately the, 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 the figures I gave you 20 something. So the, the Bourgogne and the Bourgogne Rouge are extremely open. They're bursting of fruit, hmm? and um, they're they're um, they're they're pretty stunning. I think the changes have been extraordinary. The whole cluster, the no sulfur, obviously the farming. Um, they're different wines than hmm. than t I twelve. Sure, we could see things really changing, but there's a huge turn now, and they're absolutely stunning. We should talk, there are a few questions, but we should talk about the difference, the new cuvées, of course, the separation mm -hmm. of the cuvées. And I'm going to bring up my favorite tool, Google Earth, so we can uh, No, I don't know. I'm going to give me one second. I'll be right there. OK. Okay, here we go. Munure, so we've already done an hour, but we're going to talk about these. Of course, this will be recorded if you don't watch the whole thing, so you can go to that bit later. But um, let's, um, well, let's talk about a couple things that are not necessarily changes. But let's start with your sous show. Yeah. And um, so you're, I mean, you have vines that come down quite low, but the bulk of them are up here as opposed to down here. So shows a very large vineyard. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. north bit, um, speaking of Charles, he's kind of just cheekily put Grand Souchot on the label. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, our it's, grandfathers used this name, but it was not an official name. It's not an official name, but it means what it means. It means yeah. better part of Souchot. And for the most part, your vineyards are up here in that Grand Souchot bit, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's mainly due to the fact that uh, the, the, you've got a very large complexity of soil on, the, on this part of the, of the Souchot. Mm. Uh, on the top, it's very... Uh, uh, um, it's very uh, can you to, uh, stony. Stony, yeah, it's very stony uh, and and uh, the quite dry. Hydric stress could be a danger in this place. And uh, if you go a bit uh, lower in in the road, uh, we've got a river. My grandfather suggested that a river. Um, was running uh, through the across the parcel, and we, we can. I think he was right because um, when you plowed, the soil is clean, and the first place where we can find some grass is the place where we suppose we have a river mm. um, uh, below and. Uh, 
And at this place, it's the soil is much deeper. Uh, you've got more clays. And uh, at this place, the, the vines are very, uh, they, even if you, you've got a high stress, hydric stress, you are, it's very warm or hot, no problem. At this place, vines are always very beautiful. On the top, it's a bit more difficult and it's more sensitive to virus. Mm. And uh, at the, the end of the parcel, uh, at the, the lowest uh, part, um, you, we've got uh, like mother rock and clay just on, on the top. It in, and it's very thin. And uh, I think the roots are requires to the roots to go through the um, through the um, fissure, uh, through the, the cracks in the rock, through the cracks yeah. in, in order to to reach uh, water resources. And uh, even at this place, the, the the vines are very beautiful. Mm. And um, so, if you look the parcel, you could be able to define three or five between three, three, four, five different kinds of area on uh, 0.39 hectare. So it's very fabulous on this place. And I'm not sure you have exactly the, the same complexity of soil uh, near the cemetery. Right. Down. And the, orient the, the orientation is completely different also. But Sushou from up here is all to say that Sushou from up here uh, traditionally called Grand Souchot, now called Grand Souchot by um, Charles. Charles. Mm -hmm. he likes to do that kind of thing. Um, and he's funny that way. Um, it's, it's special. And Souchot may not be the most famous for me crew in Vaughan, but from up here, it's certainly one of the best, spiciest, sexiest. Yeah. Um, it's got the Asian spice of you know, some more famous things like the Tash and things like that. Quickly, your, your brulee, for, for those who don't know, there's two sides to brulee. It's on both sides yeah. of the palm. So this bit here faces south and this bit faces north. Yeah. And you have two parcels, but they're roughly both here. Yeah. And yours kind of faces north, but it's counterintuitive, but that's probably one of the most interesting expositions. Yeah, because you 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 keep some freshness on this uh, on this side, and uh, but uh, the the difference if if we compare the wine style between uh, the north part and the south part, I think the south part is much more 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 probably be more generous, more feminine, I would say, mm -hmm. and uh, on on the on the north part it's much more masculine. Uh, I used to compare uh, Von Romanet au Brûlé, Premier Cru from uh, ours, and uh, Bruno Clavelier, uh, um, who have the, the au Brûlé on the south side. Okay. And it's it's very uh, it's obvious. His one is very is much more um, feminine, and ours much more masculine. And if you taste some au Brûlé from Meo Camusé, you you still find the the masculine part of the wine and uh, and uh, the, at this place the soil is much more thinner probably than on the south part uh, we have uh, 20 uh, 20 centimeters of soil and after it's a uh, cracked mother rock and uh, even if you want to to put a stick wood on, on uh, wood sticks sorry in the in the, in the soil it's it's very difficult. You you can't you, you can't uh, put them very in a good way because it it always move. In fact, because you you can't put deep. You can't put it uh, very deep. And uh, what is what is very um, impressive, even if you have uh, hydric stress, uh, the vine probably because they are very old, they they the leaves uh, stay keep the green color mm. and uh, it's it's not I think and it's not the case when we have just a, a, a 10 years old vines for example in the same parcel the 10 years old vine will lose his uh, leaf and and before it becomes uh, yellow but the elders vine stay green so that's mean that of course the, the, the roots are fine some water 
um, very deep uh, in, in the below the model right. So let's address some of the changes here. So first of all, um, in Vone and in a lot of the Bourgogne's are up against the road. They're not low down here. And you're, you're, you, you took one parcel out, but basically you have three parcels of Bourgogne now, two in Vaughan yeah. and one in um, Chambal down the street. Mm -hmm. But that's just to show how close they are to the Route Nationale. And you decided to take out and separate out Rouchon, Mm -hmm. which is right here. It's right below the road under Claude de Vougeot. No, Rouchon, yeah, on the other side, yeah. Yeah, right yeah. here. And so that's the wall of Claude de Vougeot, southwest, the southeast corner of, um, of Claude de Vougeot. And I got to say, I'm, I, I have the, the 17. Uh, it's absolutely stunning. I think that's extremely... Um, it complicates our life, <laughs> all these new cuvées, <laughs> but it's spectacular. Yeah, what, I think. What? Why did? Sorry. Yeah, why? Why did you separate it out? What's the terroir? What's going on there? But it's 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 definitely a very special year D for Bourgogne. It's um. It's. it's yeah, nice. I I think this place is particular because. Um, uh, for for many years, when when we we, we did the harvest on this place, um, I was always uh, very uh, surprised of, of the quality of the grapes first, and uh, the second thing is uh, the soil at this place. The soil is very different from all the other Bourgogne Rouge parcel we've got. The soil is quite is not red. It's quite white. Uh, probably it would be much more, um, it would be better for white burgundy. But at this place, we've got red. And I think it's one of the particularity of, of this place. And the second thing is, if you look, you've got the Combe d'Orvaux right. just in front of this place. So it's and on, when you look, yeah. It's on the so, Alluvial fan or? Yeah. Comme de, comme, comme de déjection. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think th this parcel is, is in this area. And um, uh, the color of the soil, the, the texture of the soil uh, is probably in very old vines at this place, is responsible of the quality uh, of, and the particularity of, the, of these grapes. And uh, I used to think for many years that at this place, w I wanted to know if the quality of the wine at this place was completely different from the others. Mm. And, and the result, uh, <clears throat> the result was uh, at the, not, was exactly what I expected. And this is why uh, we, we could have uh, tried to do it just once and after say, okay, it's not interesting and to blend it with the others the year after. But now I, I wouldn't blend it with the others. Uh, no, it's, it's stunning. So. And I think, I think <clears throat> You, you probably have this very beautiful fruit, which is round and generous, but but delicate from the alluvial fan, but the white soil just really gives it this <clears throat> linear, very straight. It's, it's village level, without a doubt. And it's it's for people who like minerality, and it's assertive, but it's also got really pretty floral, especially, I mean, in 17, it's just, it's just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, and it just just to tell it it was seventy percent old cluster, seventy percent old cluster. <clears throat> it's it's so and and generally speaking, but people do, don't if they use old cluster, they don't use old cluster in in Burgundy appellation. <clears throat> Most of the time, it's used for village or premier cru or grand cru, but more rarely for 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 Bourgogne rouge. <clears throat> so. And now, now, you, now you've made our life really complicated because you went from one von Romane village to three. So yeah. your first von, you used to have nine parcels, I think, in the, in the von. Yeah. Uh, like so the first have, one is Catrin, which... Well, yeah. It's the, in fact, um, 
for, for many years, we, we produced just one single uh, von Romanet. And I was happy, I was happy to say that it was a third coming from the north, a third coming from the middle, and a third coming from the, the south. And, and I, I, I used to say that it was representative from uh, von Romanet, geographically speaking. But for 10 years, we, we have tried to, to separate things, to look at what, what, it, uh, what was the tasting, the, the, if it was more, more or less typical from Ron Romane and the more or less personality. And uh, the first thing is we, we have decided to, to, because the South in Catrin produce some wine with a good structure, uh, quite strict, very serious. So the three uh, in this yes, part. this part, Rea, Jacquin, and a uh, little bit in Croix Blanche. In Croix Blanche, uh, it's it's quite serious. Uh, it's not very joyful. And in the north, Chalandin, Orme, it's deep soil um, and very fruity wine, but quite heavy mm. and. Uh, the spin, the spin of the wine, the spin bone, bone spin. I don't know. The spine. The like spine. Right. Sorry, spine. Yeah. Um, it, the spine is not very good. Not very, the definition of the spine is not very good on this place. It's very round, mm, round it's, a little bit rustic. There's but, um, um, David Croix, um and now Carl Verheis at Camille Giroux. They make um, a von Romanet strictly from Chalandin. And it's it's a very rich, deep soil. Yeah, bone. It's it's you know it's it's fruit. It's fruit. Yeah, it's fruit. Completely fruit. Yeah. And we have noticed that in fact, uh, Réa Jacquin and Croix Blanche, if the personality of this wine alone is not, as I said, not very uh, completely interesting. Mm. But if you add it with another parcel, it makes the other parcel much better than it was. When it was alone. Yeah. So in this case, they're complementary. Yeah. And 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 uh, uh, we have tried, for example, with with um, <clears throat> uh, we we did many trials for ten years. So I, I can't talk uh, about this for for now. But uh, it was the the best complementary uh, uh, wine we we could produce. And. Uh, in comparison with the two other ones we've got, this one is probably the one that is the more um, more easy to approach young. Uh, you've got uh, the freshness of the fruit is very uh, crunchy, uh, very fresh, and it's for um, for Baravin, for example, it's 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 perfect. Or, or for people who want to approach the the Von Romane very young, I think it's it's a good uh, it's a good idea. So let's talk about Precolombière, which now has three parcels, but they are they have a geographical logic. They're yeah, in fact, this 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 cuvée is called Precolombière, Pré for Pré de la Folie, Pré la folie. Co for Commune, au Commune, au Commune, and Lombière for Colombière. Yeah. It's the it's the heart of the village because um, it's very um, it's inside the village and. Um, because the soil are not very, very completely different from uh, in this area, I'm and uh, there is something. I'm yeah. drinking it as we speak. There is something logical to to blend uh, this this uh, this parcel. Uh, in our um, in our series of von Romane, it's the most uh, the tension is much more important in this one. The, it is a von Romane that is able to to H probably like Premier Cru, in fact. And um, it's serious, but generous at, at the same time. And uh, where, uh, where, do, where do, so it's, what, can you describe the terroirs here? Because it's, it's also a little like Rouchon. It's, it's got some, some pretty serious spine there. Yeah. Uh, the soil, um, it's quite, in fact, it's, um, it's quite deep soil, uh, but we, we persuaded that uh, when it's much more stony, uh, uh, 
after one and a half meter. Mm. Uh, and, and the tension probably came from the rocks at, at this place. Uh, and uh, I, we can't explain in another way, in fact. Mm. And the other thing is, uh, uh, Colombier has been planted in uh, 1929. So it's very old vines. Okay. So I think you've got the effect of yeah. very old vines the too. Structure, the tannic structure of the, of the old yeah. vines. But the, the tannin is this one are, are present, but they are very, uh, uh, you, you want, they, they appeal a, another gas for me, uh, this kind of tannin. It's not a hard tannin, not firm tannin for me. Mm. And lastly, the vineyard. So yeah. why, why that Lyodi on its own? Yeah, because it's a uh, it, it's very consensual uh, vaughn, but um, uh, I wish I had what, I wish I had all three open, but I had to make choices. Um. <laughs> it's it's um, it's a very deep, very rich, but not not heavy. Um, uh, a friend of mine, I, I don't know, you will translate it in English, but uh, so when he said, this wine is like a notaire de province. Well, it's like a country uh, notary public, like a country, yes. Okay. So it's very distinguished wine, you know, very, uh, it presents very well. You, 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 it it doesn't seem to be generous at the first approach, but uh, it is generous. Mm. Uh, it it makes you feel it's not, but finally say it's not exactly what it seems to be, mm. you know. And um, but uh, several faces on this wine, and um, more complex than the the Catrin. Uh, the spine is um, less obvious than in Pre Colombière. And this is one you can really approach after four or five years of bottle. Okay, and probably the most fascinating yeah. change mm. is first of all, you never had any Buddha. <laughs> yeah. And now Sorry. you have Oka and Richmond. And for, I mean, your Buddha was honestly year in, year out, often my favorite wine in the cellar. Mm. And now that they're separated out, I have even more love for each of the separate parts, even though there's so little Richemont, it's not funny. But um, so originally this was, they people allowed, I mean, the it was tolerated to call yeah. ha, Budo. Budo, and that and that came to an end recently. So that was prompted you to tell, tell us what happened. Yeah, I know. In, in fact, my, my um, because we have uh, 0 0.17 hectares, 0 0.17, so very, very few uh, hectares of uh, La Richman and uh, 0.27 hectares of Okra. And for, for, from the beginning, my uh, grand-grandfather, my grandfather and my father decided to blend it because it was allowed to, to call Obudo uh, grapes coming from Okra and Larishman. Yeah. And uh, um, because we, we, we did many things and uh, many changes, uh, this situation was very uh, uncomfortable for me because we talk about uh, Budo, we talked about Budo, O Budo. And when people uh, ask me, where are your Budo? Uh, and they show me, of course, uh, parcel Obudo. I say, no, it's not in Obudo. So I say, okay. I, I remember it's being very, I was very disappointed the first time you told me that. Yeah, of course. And, and I think, and some of my friends, uh, colleagues and friends told me, you know, it's allowed to, to blend it. People like your Obudo, even if it's not really Obudo. So uh, don't change anything. Your customers will be completely, uh, uh, disappointed or uh, they would have difficulties to understand or and so on. I say no, but I can't keep this. And this is why I decided to, 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 to use uh, the, the good names. Mm. And uh, 
if I have to be honest, uh, of course, I, I was like you. Obudo was my favorite. Mm. But uh, now, if I have to say, what is my favorite wine? What is the wine uh, in all the series we, we've got? Uh, is the closest from the behind the old wine I'd like to produce? It's La Richemont. Yes. Yes. La Richemont is probably the the biggest wine we have ever produced. The great and, uh, and because of his, his personality, it's it's a combination of all the opposites. Uh, it's very rich on the first approach, and you, you can imagine the the final will be heavy if the the beginning is like this you can imagine the final will be heavy and the the final is not heavy at all it's quite mineral it's floral it's this wine is is a movie from the beginning to the end okay so let's In let's back, let's backtrack one second your yeah. your two parcels actually touch each other on the corner yeah so lika basically being like this mm -hmm. la richman being like this yeah and um, we walked them not too long ago, and it's hard to visually see a difference, but I'm sure there's a difference. Let's start with Le Cha, which actually is one of my favorite Nuit Saint-Georges Premier Cruz. Um, it's brilliant at a lot of domains. Um, I think it's, you know, when you start getting here, in the north of Nui, it's extremely different to, it's extremely hard to say, you know, blind, is this Vaughan or is this Nui? You know, it, it, it gets very tricky. But what I love about Ka is kind of what I love about Malconsor and it's kind of what I love about um, things like Le Regno is that it combines this really beautiful fruit with, boom, you know, a, 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 just gorgeous minerality. I don't know what you think about Lake Yeah, I, 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 yeah, pr probably. I, I, uh, I know you talk yeah. about one of which there's like three bottles for the world, but can we talk <laughs> about Lake Ka for two seconds? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm having it right now and it's spectacular. Thank you. I, I have the same. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I agree. Oka is more nui. If uh, on the, um, on the typical more, point of view, there's yeah. more time, but in a way, Malconsor is more nui. Yeah, because uh, of the uh, season, you know. Yeah, it's more nui, but you've got some uh, uh, aérien. Um, um, yeah, airy. Um, yeah, yeah. You, you've got the, the, the and so you nui. It's uh, you 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 are waiting some something. Uh, uh, a bit vigorous, but it's it seems to be, and and at the end it's not. Mm. Uh, and 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 what what I pay, I pay more and more attention now to to the texture, mm. and um, the texture of this wine is is very fabulous for me. It's beautiful. You've got it's very easy to the. Uh, I can't explain in fact in in English, but. Uh, um, you you've got it's also it's salty it's uh, fruity it's floral it's earthy it's hairy mm -hmm. and uh, it's all of this it 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 gives big complexity and um, you 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 can you can see the the strength of the wine that that can let you imagine you on Nuit Saint Georges. But with, with the, the elegance of Vaughan. Yeah, it is. I, how this bottle's tasting today, I would probably mistake it for Vaughan without a doubt. Um, okay, so now you can talk about La Richemont. Hmm. All three bottles of it. Yeah. <laughs> so what's, yeah, it is. what's the, what's the, apart from La Richemont being, your parcel being higher on the slope, is there, is there a physical difference between the two vineyards? Yeah, it's more, more sandy. La Richemont. Yeah, La Richemont is more sandy. So more elegance in the wine? Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's deeper, deeper than the Okra. Okay. Much deeper. Deeper, uh, uh, so 
we, we, we will be able to see the, because the difference, because the way to vinify was different in uh, 17 and 18, for example, because La Riche was it's 100% all cluster every and year. Always, you're going to try to always do 100% on La Riche one? Yes, uh, I keep 100% because I think it's, it's a good thing for him. And uh, Okra, it was not the case. It was uh, 50, it has been uh, 60, but in 19, it's 100 balls. So we're really able to compare them uh, on the same way to vinify. Okay. Okay. And, and the difference is, is really obvious. So it's not the vinification that is responsible for the difference because we, we can say, uh, because, uh, because uh, you've got 100%, it's, it's normal that it's different. No, it's not directly linked to the, to the proportion of all cluster. But the, the most impressive on this one is the, the texture is if you ask me it's it's a it's it's a target for me for not all the wines but uh in the idea it is what, what i like to because just to, to say a friend of mine told me do you think now you produce you want the wine you wanted to produce and i said uh, no we we on the way but but i think it's the uh, the goal is not yet, is not yet there. But when I taste La Richman, I can think we reached the target. I really wanted to do La Richman, but we have very few of them and they're very special. So I'm going to have to come and drink one of yours. Yeah? Yes. Um, thanks for all the differences. I would love to answer a few questions that I skipped so far. From Alex, when you're only using partial hull cluster, where do you like to put them? Uh, most of the time, I like to protect it. it. But, so uh, under the yeah, uh, I, I used to to put some hull cluster to have a distem, hull cluster, and distem. So layers. Um, Just three layers. Three layers, D stem, whole cluster, D stem. D stem. But I'm not sure it's the good idea. <laughs> okay. Because, uh, yeah, no, I'm not sure because, uh, in fact, uh, if you can put on the top uh, grapes with no juice on it, it's better. You know, because I I imagine if you want to keep a fruit safe, mm. you, you put it on, uh, at home on, uh, on a basket, uh, if the berries or the, the fruit is not, uh, you have no juice out, mm. you can keep it long mm. without touching it. But if you've got some juice on it, mm. you will have some moisture. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can develop some. Uh, so uh, I, I think it's, it, uh, it could be better to, to, I think about something quite different from what we, we do now. Would be probably to have a uh, this time uh, old cluster, and at the end, the the last part of old cluster would come from directly from uh, the boxes, mm. you know, uh, no contact with juice on 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 the on comme on dit sur le tapis, tu vois, euh, que ce soit pas en contact avec le juice, no no contact with the juice on the top. Um. Okay. Um, there's a question about corks. Uh, Liz Lee asked, um, she visited you in, uh, in the winter of 2018. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm talking to Becky. Yes, come around. Come say hello. Have a sip of Le Cra. Anyway. Um, and she said you, you started using extra long corks on some of the 2016s. Mm -hmm. Once you show, have you Lekha half a part of Budo? Hey, hi Becky. Hi Becky. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, have you extended that to more of the wines? Yeah, uh, all the premier cru and uh, and we 
we use uh, the, the corks are um, uh, shorter for village, but the density is bigger because we the, the diameter is the same as uh, for premier cru and grand cru. You know what I mean? It's it's shorter, but the diameter is the same. Okay. And but we can imagine for for example for pre Colombia to have the same cork. Okay. But no, no interest, for example, for, for Bourgogne, no, no real interest. In that right. case. Um, David one at Veritas wanted to know about the um, 18 vintage. I, I think with Veritas, we're going to do a series of, so we'll do another, because that's a big question, and we're tasting 17s. I don't want to ignore that. I'm just going to look at the comments here. Um, Michael Feuerstein sends a hug to Becky. Hug. Andrew Gelb says hello, Becky. And I think we've covered a lot of the questions. And we've been here for a while, more than an hour. Mm -hmm. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. It went by super quick. Is there anything you'd like to add or? Yeah, but I just what I can add is uh, this job is very uh, passionate because uh, everybody is able to do exactly what he, he wants. If we want to have the, the simplest part of this job, just to produce grapes, uh, when we raise grapes to produce wine, it's possible and you'll be able to produce good wine. Uh, if you want to look for more accurately, if you want to look for, if you want to search to to discover something, it's all, all, all also possible. And uh, but the risk is is more is more important. And uh, I, I think uh, if if we are not able to to support to 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 be able to to live with this risk, uh, you can't do it. Mm. Uh, I have some friends who say, uh, I'd like to, to try with less sulfur, but I'm afraid. So uh, I, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't uh, sleep if I, if I had too, too low sulfur quantity or, and, and I think it's, it's a shame because, it, because you're afraid, you're frightened, you, you, you will not try. Mm. And, uh, the risk is that at the end of your your professional life uh, could be to say, "What a pity! I didn't dare." Mm -hmm. And uh, but when you dare, you can fail, and sometimes you can succeed. And I think uh, probably it's necessary to fail in order to succeed after. Well, and uh, and, uh, and what I uh, I have to say to my customers, uh, and is what I told you it's a it's a way we are on the way mm. and uh, uh if we want to involve uh, we need to take risk and sometimes it can fail but we never give up we we try to to understand we try to adapt in in order to understand in order to not fail on the same point mm. the 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 season after the 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 vintage after and uh and I, I can imagine the end of my professional life, tasting uh, all the, the vintage and say, uh, this year I tried this. What is the, the result finally? Is it, is it, is it, was it the good way, a good idea, bad idea, you know? And probably I, I would need a second life to try something else. <laughs> but, and, uh, but I won't have, of course. Yeah. But uh, I think life in, is really interesting because you dare and because you try. Well, because you, you accept to take risk and you accept probably to, to lose all your customers. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I hope not. <laughs> but I, I think it's, uh, it is something, um, it's worth doing this. Well, the, the results are, it's showing the risks and it's not a, it's a village where you don't have to take risks. Yeah, no. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm glad a few of you are. And um, 
and it's it's really pretty spectacular. The the seventeens, I, I love the vintage, but obviously a lot of things are coming together. The farming, of course. <coughs> the I think the 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 lesser sulfur extraction, more whole cluster, is certainly bringing a lot of just upfront beauty to the wines. And we loved the wines that came before, but they were they needed time often. Mm -hmm. Here you've got both. You've got immediacy. You've got extremely rewarding fruit. Really beautiful. Really open. And uh, they're, you know, in 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 seventeen, there there were three tastings that really just blew me away. And it was uh, you, David Croix, and uh, Thomas Boulet. Mm -hmm. And and um, you know, all of you three specifically are not talked enough about quite enough yet but i think that's going to change like super quick because the wines yeah. are gorgeous yeah but the, the most important is is uh, that the wine uh, people like the wine try, like the wine uh, uh, the wine to be interesting for people i think the fact that we don't talk about me or the domain uh, i think it's you know, we, I, I will use a French expression and we will translate it. We, we, on, on dit en français, il y a le faire savoir et le savoir faire. <laughs> uh, ok, et, et, le, et le problème, c'est que il faut, oui, on, on doit essayer de rester dans le savoir faire. On essaye, j'essaye, et, et les autres s'occupent pour moi du faire savoir. Mm. Mais moi, je veux pas m'occuper du faire savoir. Okay, Donc, I ça, peux traduire. Uh, that's, oh God, thank you. Um, le faire savoir, le savoir faire. So savoir faire is there. There's well, there's well, there's basically talk and 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 walk. And, you know, this there's the similar expression is you you walk the walk or you talk the talk, and that's you walk the walk. The talk will happen. I think is what you. And I prefer Where someone to do it for me. Well, yeah. yeah, I prefer someone to do it for me, to 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 talk about us, and yeah. and, and I, I try to do what is the thing I um, I, I try to be not too bad in 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 in, in farming and in, in in producing wine and. Uh, okay, and these are these are gorgeous wines, and now I want to try all the others we have, so. I think we have part of the team still on this, and we have to try team Elias Caro. We have to try the others now because it's too exciting. Um, with that said, Pascal, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Let's, let's please come and taste the 19s and 18s soon. <laughs>